Hello friend, welcome back to Diesel Mercedes YouTube channel. Today we have a new customer traveling from far and therefore we have a great opportunity to film 2003. It's a Freightliner actually, Sprinter 2500. Don't get confused with the looks of the Mercedes-Benz badge all over all these badges. This is actually freight liner vehicle. That's how it originally came out. This customer is this channel subscriber. He realized I'm living and my shop is only a couple hours from his place. So today he brought it. He's in the town and he's here for the automatic transmission service. He selected his own kit. This is from Euro Parts and it's from Southern California. So basically there is a fluid in it, in this kit. It also came with the gasket for the tranny pan. Here is the filter. Here is that little locking pin and they sell that including uh, with the tax and shipping roughly $140. In different video on this channel I discussed and showed you how to correctly lift the sprinters. This is a not normal vehicle. There's no way, no way I will be using my lift and trying to lift this vehicle here. I will destroy that body. There is also some rust on it already. So you have to be very careful lifting your sprinter. Here are the correct lift points in the front. You can see them. We will finally look underneath the hood on the beautiful turbo diesel five cylinder engine. This one is 2.7 liter. And you have access to the transmission from here, this will be engine oil dipstick. And here is that cap, which is plugging that transmission tube. There is no dipstick. If you are new to this and you remove this plug, you just find a hole and no dipstick. Don't be alarmed, that's normal. So here using this, you can be checking the quality and quantity of the fluid. The owner, of course, has his spare fluid here and he owns the dipstick. It's basically Mercedes said, we will not give it to the people anymore. It will be considered service tool. So you have to buy your own. And this is how I will be working on it. Despite the fact I have a really cool lift, I cannot use it because the arms will need to be changed completely. But I would love to show you right now underneath how beautiful access we have to the transmission or the, on the next generation of sprinter there is a nightmare similar cross member like this it's actually passing in this area area so i did that service on 2007 Sprinter and that was absolutely nightmare. Now this should be very easy except here is the warning. Do you see that famous electrical connector? This is electronic transmission and it has electronic parts inside. You will see them in a little bit. And this is also leaking. But there is some weird area right here. Somebody was doing something weird here. So I don't know what if that will give me any complication. This connector for some reason was not included in that set, but I have one in storage. So he's lucky and I hope we will be replacing it. Uh, I will replace it, except I have a little bit doubts what this glue or what it what is this stuff here. This is the electric connector I was talking about. Here is for you the ordering number for this vehicle. Here you can see that fluid nicely draining. The tool was the hex number five. And these pen bolts are different. It's a Torx number 30. Here you can have a view on the 
removed pan. This was the drain plug. So as you can see, it's higher. So there's always some fluid left. When you are removing, there will be always little spillage. What I'm missing here, I don't see magnets. Magnets which should be collecting very fine shavings from clutches and so on. I don't see them here. So that's kind of odd. When we are at it, let's show the rubber gasket. Oh, that's pretty hardened. So that wasn't replaced for a while. It's not like it will break, but it feels way more harder than the new one will be. So that obviously it's complete replacement and this needs cleaning. And I have it on purpose still with that filter, which is right here. So what you are looking besides that filter, it's a valve body and we will be also dealing with that electronic connector. Also make a note for yourself, do you see that tube? This is where the dipstick comes down and straight in the pan. So here we have perfectly clean pan ready for the new rubber gasket which will come on it later. But first let's go back underneath a vehicle and replace this filter. There is a rubber o-ring on it, so pay attention to it so you don't lose the one from the filter which is in the tranny right now when you, don't, you are not shoving the new one and having the old one. Here is like a little clip. To remove that old filter you simply pull on it towards to the floor and there will be always coming this fluid out. So get ready for it, we'll have that catching pan position really in front, right here. I'm trying to get the fluid out before I set it aside. And I can see it came out with that o-ring, so it didn't get stuck here. I love that. And I can install the new one. So. This is that clip, there is a little protrusion for it, so just, you know, watch for it. It will click there, and it needs to go in front, did you hear that? And I can see it's perfectly in, it's clicked here, and then the o-ring clicked here. See a little bit of that black residue from the old filter, this is very great reason why we are dealing with it, why it's being removed. And since we are here, let's see how you remove that electrical connector. So this lever needs to go down. And it will start actually pushing out that electrical connector. Did you see that? And look, it's full of fluid. This needs to be thoroughly cleaned. And as we discuss many, many times on this channel, and you can read it on the forums. This is very crucial because the fluid will travel through the wire insulation and it will go up to the computer and destroy it later. So this, I will say this connector, if you didn't do it for a while, this replacement, if you don't change the fluid maybe each 30,000 miles, I will say, order the connector. Most likely there will be moisture inside like you just saw. Now this is, like somebody put some glue here or so I'm a little bit afraid of this. I don't know what it means. And you need seven millimeter socket for it. You don't have to remember that because you just check it on the new part, correct? So I'm trying carefully find it's right in the center I think it nicely just popped on it did you hear it and I'm undoing that right in center screw or the mini bolt it's not too long so that should be it and now what I'm questioning what is going on here I will start carefully moving it out Oh yeah, did you see that? And this is our problematic part. 
all of us before you will start shoving a new one in. Look at this, look at this, what is this? What is happening here? What was somebody doing with it? Also, I immediately see, watch out, watch out. One O-ring came out, but if you look on the new unit, there are two O-rings. Where is the second one? So I have to fish it out, and here we go. I feel it right there. It's kind of pinched. So I'm not happy right here. I don't know what happened. I need to bring a mirror and look inside. So I have my mirror here. And I believe everything is good. I've looked very carefully, very gently, dried out inside. But if you ever put your fingers there, be careful not to bend the pins. And obviously, you have to be extremely gentle with putting the new connector. Both O-rings in the place, they didn't fall off or anything. And roughly remember where this part was. I'm very, very carefully starting feeling that entry. Uh -huh. And only when it goes easily, I will start pushing it in. There's definitely no place for some brutality, okay? Uh-huh. Feel it. And that's basically it. Now I will use that number seven to pull it in. So, find the screw or mini bolt, whatever you want, and that will perfectly seat it. It's coming in, very slowly coming in. This will be very little torque, it's a plastic part, there's no reason to over tight it. When it hits end, that means end, and you will stop it pulling itself in. You can see it, and look, very gentle, that's it. There's no reason for more torque. Back to this connector. I had it hanging this way, so if anything was inside, it will drip out by the, its weight. But everything's fine. Again, you can see this detail here. It's all that screw on. It will basically, as you are turning this yellow thing, it will pull it or push it in. So, the same situation here, very gently aligning everything, feeling it. I can feel it nicely without any problems seated and now I'm turning it up. Look at that. And I can help to it, push on it, right? Careful until it clicks. We successfully replaced the electrical connector on this tranny, which definitely today should be part of this service. Excellent. The owner will be very happy. And here comes perfectly clean pan with a brand new gasket, which you just put on it, you don't glue it, you don't use any gasket maker. Everything I already cleaned, this seated area, but just to show it for you, for the camera, All right, this Mating surfaces needs to be perfectly clean. There cannot be any sand and so on. I have these bolts with these adapters ready here. So you might have been already, if you following the video or doing it yourself, you might have been surprised in the beginning. While removing these, you might think, oh, they weren't very tight. Well, that was a mistake. It's correct. If the tech who did this job was working correctly, I believe the torque is only 8 newton meters, but you better recheck that. As I said, I never use torque wrench on this. I go by the feel. I did so many of these. I know what I'm expecting from it. So. You will go around. I have it ready also for the other side. And if you want to listen, and you will say, ha, I want to have it torqued more. 
Uh, you will not win anything. You will not stop any leaks. Look at this. I just find out that this bolt right here is stripped. I pulled it out. It ripped its threads and somebody torque it too much and damaged the casing so now I have to hope that I will have enough space here right next to that connector to find a longer bolt and I can put a nut there okay it will clear I can see it will clear it will catch and whoever will be working here later um, can deal with it. <laughs> so this is unfortunate, however, at least this happened in the good spot. It's still perfectly installed. And you think you are done here? You will just install that drain plug with a new washer and you are out of here? Well, if you want to do this job correctly, you cannot leave yet because this transmission actually has a access to the torque converter. The access holes are right here and that should be drained too to make this job perfect and I'm sorry I don't remember spec for this torque but again use common sense if you don't have the torque wrench just make it nice and snug I pried off these two openings kind of rubber covers and what you are looking at it's the torque converter now I need to pull, put the socket on the main crank on the front of engine and start turning the engine clockwise until I will see here in that opening torque converter drain plug. Here you can see it on front of the engine main crank pulley and the socket size is number 27 and you will keep turning it and turning it and turning it while looking in these two openings and as you can see in the one closer to the transmission pan there is finally that torque converter drain plug it will give you good advice when you find that plug immediately remove that ratchet and that socket from main crank because you don't want forget it there you will not see it and then start up the engine that will be a huge problem this torque converter plug it's also hex number five always make sure that the tool goes all the way in if there was any dirt clean it you don't want to strip this baby now carefully crack it open there will be again very small torque on this and now we will get more fluid out let's get ready I hope I will not splash all over myself and that camcorder we'll see just in a second actually it's not coming wildly at all we are lucky and you can probably hear it coming out because there's a bunch of fluid also there now after that I will not film how I'm putting it back again that's just common sense here is a really quick look on that quality of that fluid we got out so I will say average contamination not so bad so draining the transmission and torque converter this one will have five quarts the yellow one and here the scale says 
two point let's say six or two point seven quarts were caught in this one. So together seven point seven plus something end up on the floor, little bit dripped on the side of the pan, catching pan. So little bit shy of eight US quarts. And how we will fill transmission and how we will fill that torque converter where everything will happen through this tube. It's always a little bit challenging to find the right funnel which will seal enough right here so you don't have an immediately leaks all over when you start pouring it. This one seems to be fitting the best right now. Let's try that. Here I showed you already. Here is the fluid which the owner selected for his baby. So let's go and start carefully pouring it in and hopefully we can avoid any leaks. You cannot pour this fast. It's takes a patience because that dipstick tube it's not super wide as you saw so this takes definitely easily five ten minutes to getting it inside so i have inside slightly over seven quarts that's enough for me for this moment i will go ahead cap it I checked underneath the vehicle, there are no any leaks, nothing like that. So I will lower it on the ground, start it up and start warming up the transmission. And only after I did run the engine for a while, therefore the transmission, everything is running, I will start worrying about the final fill, the final level. One of these you are measuring the level of it, completely inserting it. It really goes on this model all the way in. The owner has actually original one from Mercedes. The number for you, if you want to buy your own, it's 1401521. That's all what is written on it. I compare it with mine, they are the same length. And there are two levels on this dipstick. One of them is for 25 Celsius, which is here. And that's the one which is for a cold fluid. I don't like ever use that range. I rather always measure it when it's hot. That's a 80 degrees Celsius. That means the engine and transmission fluid, everything is hot. So it should be between these two lines. And that's how you adjust it perfectly using the dipstick with engine running and using that measurement. And that's all from me. Thank you for watching and be subscribed. I will have more about sprinters for you on this channel soon. See ya!